which also received a Theodore Geisel Honor for Outstanding Beginning Readers, and most recently, the 2013 Caldecott Honor for her book, Green. Her level of professionalism and artistry is matched by her warmth and generosity, as you will soon see. Please help me welcome Laura McCarthy Seeger. So much fun to be here and listen to everybody. So so many chords have been struck while this while I'm listening to everybody. And one thing I realized that um, you know I've always felt that there are two kinds of people in this world: those who who pass through childhood and those who never leave it. And I think um, I think it was Amy before who said that you know she's very much in touch with her inner child, as I think a lot of us are. And that's definitely how I, I am. When I approach creating a book, I never really think about, you know, the age of the child or the age of the person, really. I just make books that I think um, that I like or that speak to me in some way, and then I hope that they'll speak to somebody else or, or you know, oftentimes, let's see how, how this works. I actually did. There it goes. Okay. So I thought maybe what I would do is show you a very little bit about each of my books. And these are all of them. And what I wanted to um, talk about is, in addition to how important and how careful, I am the author and the illustrator of, of all my books. And just as the other authors were saying, it, every single word is so carefully thought about and selected. And again, you know, like Nina, I spent more time in my head on each of my books than I do actually putting anything on paper or with paint or, you know, with, with um, writing. Um, and so everything is so carefully thought about, every word is so carefully selected because picture books, you know, have so many fewer words. Um, but the other thing I wanted to talk about is visual literacy, li literacy with young children. And um, one of the things that, or really almost the main thing with most of my books is this approach to looking at the world maybe a little bit differently. In other words, it, it occurs to me that at, at some point in, during development, uh, we stop, and you know, I don't know if it's in childhood or when it is exactly, but there's a point at which we stop seeing. Well, you know, that which we see all the time, we just kind of walk by, we don't notice anymore. We don't, we don't really see the way very, very young children do. Uh, or at least some of us don't, and, and so one of the things I do with my books, with you know using different uh, methods of doing this is, and I'll talk about that, is kind of force you to really look, or maybe see something that isn't even there in the first place. This is actually not something from my book, but what do you guys see when you look at this? Tree, Tree. marble, marble, Rocks. art. Rocks. Well, I see a bear. And every time I show this to kids, they go, a bear? I don't see a bear. And then I say, okay, so just stare at it. Don't take your eyes out, but keep staring. And see if you see that bear. And suddenly, oh, there it is. Now, here's the interesting part about this. I'm going to go back one step. Now, do you still see that bear? So what has happened here is the eye has sort of been trained almost to see something that isn't really even there. And that's what I have so much fun doing with my books, is to just kind of play around with perspective and the way in which we look at things and kind of force you to look at things that you might. So, um, somebody before was talking about you know, reading books without, I think it was Amy who said earlier on, uh, she was reading the book and not really looking at the picture. So if this is, I'll show you as we go on about how, um, just different ways to kind of force you to see. Um, one, one of my first books, I think this was my second book actually, uh, is The Hidden Alphabet, and I'll show you a couple pages from this book. This book uh, uses die cut holes so that, so that um, Arrowhead is actually being seen through a hole in the page, and when the page is lifted, you see that it actually was not the arrowhead at all, it's the negative space. So here again, it's a way to look at something one way, at, at, at one perspective, and then, and so you're being forced to pay attention to the background space, the negative space, and then suddenly we come back to the foreground space. Um, I'll show you a couple more images from this book. 
So that's the kind of thing that, you know, I, my background is, is uh, in animation. I used to create television show openings. So to me, everything is a, uh, a camera move or a camera angle or, or an animation. Um, somebody, I think it was Nina who was talking about storyboarding. When I set out to, to actually pry these books out of my head, one at a time, of course, the, I, I make a storyboard, just as I always did when I made an animation. To me, a picture book is an animation. It's just, you're, you're showing motion from one place to another place, and uh, it's just there are just fewer frames in, in the animation, so that's what the storyboard is. So another, here's another example, another book, where we think we're looking at one thing, that um, lemon is a die-cut hole, and when the, when the page is turned, we see that we were actually seeing something else. Now, this is fun uh, to read with kids because, let me go just back to that first one. Lemons are not red, and then you, you can have this whole conversation, well, then what color are they? And what, what else is not red? What's never red? I mean, even an adult has to kind of think about, okay, well, what is never, ever red? You know, and um, we, this book goes through goes through, uh, I'm not going to show you the whole book, but it goes through the colors with the same kind of prediction and talking about what's not. So stretching the brain a little bit to think about, you know, we all learn as children and, and as adults what is, but what about what's not?